were flaring as families were trying to leave. Now, the outburst forcing the judge to step in as sides threatened, yelled, blamed one another for their losses. Words filled with anguish and anger cut through the courtroom as Cordante Walker is handcuffed and escorted out. The outburst sparking fury from both families. A poignant reflection of the deep pain and betrayal Luli Skimolin's mother is feeling. I loved you at one time. I accepted you into my family. You promised me that you can be good to my daughter. You failed me. You failed as a man, a father, and a son. A bitter tone as Bobby recalls the trust she placed on then 23-year-old Cordante, now shattered and replaced by an overwhelming sense of loss. Luli spent the day celebrating her 23rd birthday on August 26, 2020, the last time her family would ever see her alive. The celebration took a horrific turn as a witness reported waking up to screams and seeing the young mother lying in a bush while Cordante allegedly beat her and then ran her over. It sucks. It hurts to know that we waited three years to not even get what we really were hoping for, which was an answer as to why. The courtroom is silent with the weight of their grief palpable in the air. Everywhere they look, they have reminders of happier times. Looking forward, there is a void. Longing for the past and aching for a future that will never be. For my niece, it's, it's, it's hard to see because she comes up and we only got pictures. She says, I miss my mom. Luli's family has been waiting for this day for years to face Cordante. Today, he asked to face them. I truly, sincerely apologize. And how you guys feel is to validated. You feel me? So I just apologize. And uh, no love is lost on my side. I love all you guys, and you guys deserve this moment. A rare moment of humility as Cordante recognizes the irreparable harm he has inflicted on both families. His mother sharing her relationship with Cordante's father, saying they lived in a house of horrors, claiming their relationship had everything to do with his development and his explosion the night of Luli's death. And Cordante will have to live out the rest of his days knowing that it was at his hands the woman he will forever love lost her life. All eyes were on Judge Avril Rothrock, whose responsibility was to sentence Cordante. He was strangely cold, callous, and unmoved immediately after he ran over Ms. Kimolan. And I have determined to impose a sentence on count two felony murder of 17 years or 204 months. With the sentencing behind them, both families can now begin to heal. May the Kimolan and Walker families one day find Peace and the judge saying that this is one of the most egregious cases of domestic violence the court has ever seen. This, of course, weighing, weighing into the decision that, of course, was made today. Again, Cordante is facing 204 months in prison for felony murder of Luli Skimolin and five months for unlawful possession of a firearm, which will be served concurrently. He will also be tasked with battery courses therapy, and he will not be allowed to drink as part of a three-year community custody sentence when he is released. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 28 verse 5 evil men understand not judgment but they that seek Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai understand all things call Holeim La Abanawa Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rekat Kodash double honors to the elder apostles and elder bishops of great millstone who rule well salutations to the Akium out there on the highways and the byways. Salutations to the hopeful elect. Salutations to you speckled birds, you Israelite foreigners. And Shalom to the Akwaf, sitting and listening in silence as the scriptures say to do so. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 5 in the GNT. Evil people do not know what justice is. But those who worship Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, understand it well and at the end of the day man you know we must understand and recognize that these occurrences of death of murder 
Uh, however, it's brought forth by Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah is justified, man. Okay, because you know uh, you'll always have family members that speak highly and well of their loved ones that that, that they have lost to whatever uh, judgment Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah is brought forth, man. Okay, but it's all righteous and all according to the will and pleasure of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, and we. The ones that have been awoken to this truth, the ones that have been awoken to our heritage, the ones that have been given the understanding of the secrets and everything else that, ha that has been revealed to us, understand why these things happen, man. Okay, and as the Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native and Seminole Indians, we have a, a, a duty to walk correctly, to acknowledge uh, our... Um, our covenant, our guidelines, our instructions that was given to us by Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, because, you know, those of us that don't want to uh, uh, have favor or be in subjection or obedient to the ordinances of, uh, of Yahweh by Yahweh Shai, you know, we seek death. Because that, that lets us know that we're seeking our own paths and our own paths have led us to the position that we're in right now. So, you know, again, you know, because we all lose people, even uh, us brothers and sisters in the truth. You know, and but we know we we know and we understand why, man. It was part of that person's judgment for it to be played out the way it happened when Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai gave them that judgment when they when they went back to the spiritual realm before they came back in this lifetime. Okay? And we also know and recognize and understand that this is you know, just the beginning towards the kingdom because all these people that we see being put to death of our family, of, of our loved ones, we will see in the kingdom again, man. You know, death is not the end, man. And that's something that we understand, man. Okay, so again, Proverbs 28, verse 5 in the GNT. Evil people do not know what justice is. And this is justice from the, from the Lord, man. Because Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah created everything. All the nations, the people. And if you go against them, you get judged. Period. But those who worship the Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, understand it well. And we understand these judgments, man. Okay? But we also know, too, that uh, for us to be unstable and unbalanced and not be able to uh, have a level headed and precise judgment. You know, because we're not supposed to be furious. We're supposed to be calm, cool, collect. We're supposed to have a clear mind. So let's grab this precept. Okay, this is the book of going to be Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach. Chapter 10. And I'm going to read verse... I'm going to read verse 18. Pride was not made for men, nor furious anger for them born... It's so like a north of furious anger for them that are born of a woman. So it's not good to be anger continuously, to be furious, to always just snap, to never, you know, uh, uh, con control your emotions. And, and, and we know that that uh, kind of mindset has evolved from men being raised by one parent households, man. Men being raised by women. And taking on the traits, the attributes, the characteristics of women and not knowing how to be men. How to uh, conduct themselves accordingly and as men and furthermore righteously in every single aspect of life, man. Okay, because as we know from the news clip, which you still see right now on the screen, that this man, I mean, beat the living doo-doo out of this woman. And then after he whooped her. He decided to um, run her over with the car, man, with the, with his vehicle, man. So again, uh, uh, Sirach 10, verse 18. Pride was not made for men, nor furious anger for them that are born of a woman, man. So it's not good to always snap and to, to not uh, hold your composure, to not be level-headed, to always be emotional, okay, highly unbalanced, man. That, that's not a characteristic, a trait of a man. Okay, so for, so for this, you know, this nigga right here to obviously, you know, literally beat his woman. And that, and that obviously shows you too. Let's grab this. Salakia. Uh, it's the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. That, that obviously shows you that he didn't love this woman. And, I, and, and let me say this too, Salakia. I don't know 
what this woman did, what happened, whatever you know. But at the end of the day, we know it's judgment, and the Lord put the spirit on him, the spirit on him to do this. But I don't know what was said, what was done for him to, you know, just snap on this woman like this and beat her to death and just run her over with the vehicle. Uh, this is Ephesians chapter five, starting off at verse twenty-eight. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Now we know that two-thirds of you Israelites, you don't even love yourself because look what you do to your own bodies. Look how you treat your own temple. You know, you're constantly out here doing all types of narcotics. Okay, you, you, you know, uh, crack, uh, uh, fentanyl, popping all types of uh, uh, supplements, you know, uh, 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 pills and stuff. Drinking all types of uh, 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 stuff that gets you uh, intoxicated, you know, uh, lean, uh, all types of different alcohols, and and you know uh, your your, uh, your diet is just you know completely disgusting and abominable, you know. So you don't love yourself. So why would you love uh, your wife, the mother of your children, man? Okay. And so. As men, you know, you, you're supposed to have a mind frame of like, look, if this woman is disrespectful, because we, because we can't bring forth the judgments according to the scriptures. We're not in rulership. We're in captivity, so we can't bring forth. You know, if a person is is a flaming mo, we can't stone them. If our woman commits adultery on us, we can't, you know, stone them. If our children is disrespectful and won't and won't take heed to us, we can't take them to the elders and get them judged and stone them. We can't bring forth the judgment, man. Yahweh Shem Yahweh has to take heed. So in, in, in any matter that you're going through with your with your woman, okay, your wife, if she's committing adultery, you know, just, just completely being a bitch, disrespecting you, just you know, if you don't have any uh offspring with her, just leave her, man. But nah, again, it goes back to you niggas being highly emotional and unstable because you were raised by uh, uh, the woman, man. Okay, and if you had a father in your life, he was more li more likely raised by a woman, and he's uh, uh has the mentality of a uh, of a worldly two third Babylonian nigga, man. Okay, verse twenty nine. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as Yahweh. Why Yahweh shot the church, man? Okay, but again, this is a prime example of a man doesn't even uh, care about his own flesh because as as it says in the scriptures. When you uh, marry a woman, you become one flesh. Okay, and so for also too, I don't know what happened, what was said, what made this dude flip out. I don't know this dude. I'm just, you know, lining up with the scriptures. Okay, but for you to sit right here and beat your woman and then run her over with the car instead of, you know, because again, Salakia, because it has, to, it has to be said over and over again because, you know, Jake is kind of remedial when, he, when they listen to our lessons. It's all of your how about Shimia Washah, it's all judgment. Point blank period. But at the end of the day, you niggas, you're unstable, you're emotional. Instead of you just leaving, going about your business, just taking care, you know, co-parenting, taking care of your child. No, you got to ex the woman out. But again, it's also judgment. So let's just jump back because what this dude did is this. Um, it's the book of Ecclesiastes, also known as Sirach, chapter 9, verse 1. Be not jealous over the wife of thy bosom so what type of uh, uh, rage jealousy made this man just snap made this man you know say you know she, this bitch gotta go i gotta take her out i don't want her breathing in the morning and also too you know which is wicked and, and not not of our customs obviously you know as you heard on the news the news clip she was celebrating her birthday and that was the last time you know uh, before her birthday ended that, that she lived man which that's not that's not of our customs, man. Okay, it's not of our customs. I'm gonna read this in the, in the GNT, now, Sirach chapter nine verse one. Advice about women: Don't be jealous of the wife you love. You will only be teaching her how to do you harm. But in this concept, you know she can't teach nobody nothing. She can't you know uh, uh, seek out uh, revenge or. Uh, any type of thing like that because he took her out. You know, because Yahweh Hashim Yahweh Shah ordained it, man. Okay? But let's continue. Uh, Because at the end of the day, man, like 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 it's being stated in this lesson, man, you know, uh, this woman is not innocent. Yeah, you know, she got taken out. It's sad and everything else. 
But at the end of the day, it is what it is, man. It's judgment from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Job chapter 4, starting off at verse 7. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent. So this woman is not innocent, man. And the Lord had her had her perish that way. He made uh, He made her go through a lot of affliction, a lot of pain, uh, a, a lot of suffering in that moment before her spirit left her vessel, man. Okay? Because again, this was judgment from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. Job 4 verse 7 Remember I pray thee Whoever perish being innocent Or where were the righteous cut off So again this young lady This young Israelite woman She was not innocent And whatever she did in her past life In her past life That Yahweh Shem Yahweh Gave her this judgment It was justified and righteous and balanced man The Lord saw fit for it to happen this way man Okay Death through pain man you know, which goes back into the book of uh, uh, Second Edges, chapter nine, man. You know, verse eight. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. So we know our people plow iniquity, which is sin upon sin, transgression upon transgression. Okay, because they reap and sow wickedness, man. L look at uh, Israel's lifestyle, man. Look, look at look uh, uh, look at what they produce. Look what they look, look at their, what they're about, man. Okay, two-thirds of our people are just wicked, man. Are, are, are complete heathens, man. Okay, mentally and spiritually, man. You know, you, know, you, you, you two-thirds have got to go, man. Point blank, period. And, and then when you come back in the kingdom in your right mind and the right spirit, you'll be loved, man. But right now, you got to go, man. Because if it was, if Yahweh Shem Yahweh said all Israel has to, you know, come back to him and repent and worship him, it wouldn't happen, man. Because you niggas love this world. You love Esau, Edom, the so-called self-proclaimed white man. So two-thirds of you niggas have to go, man. Now, all of our people in, 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 are, are, you know, uh, accustomed to complete madness, man. You know, that, that African Hamite bullshit, the unk, all that bullshit, okay? Uh, slave plantation, Christianity, uh, uh, the nation of Islam, all types of madness, uh, uh, witchcraft, Okay, uh, you, you, your so-called spiritual. Any, anytime abroad, because it's mainly the women. Anytime, anytime abroad, an Israelite woman says she's spiritual, that means she's into that tarot card bullshit. She goes to a a, a, a card reader, and and, and, and she uh, bases her life, her mentality, and her relationships off of somebody else's goddamn birthday in their uh, a, a birth chart. Okay, that that's that's completely that's 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 just a little bit of uh, of saying how our, how our people are, are just completely fucking off, man. Verse nine, by the blast of the Most High they perish. Okay, by the blast of the Most High they perish, and by the breath of His nostrils are they consumed, and that's what happened, man. The Lord called out that judgment, and she got consumed. She she uh, uh was made to perish that night. Okay. Let's keep on going, man. Let's keep on going. Let's grab, uh, so I can bear with me, grab this next precept. Uh, this is going to be the book Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, I believe, is what I want. Chapter 16, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16. I'm going to start off at verse uh, 13. For thou hast power of life and death. Thou leadest to the gates of hell and bringest up again. So the Lord has power to, you know, take away life and bring forth uh, life. Okay, he has the power to bring forth judgment, death, and he has the power to bring forth creation, man. Okay, everything is ordained and done and, and, and uh, 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 commanded by Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, verse fourteen. A man indeed killeth through his malice, and the spirit, when it is gone forth, returneth not. Neither the soul received up cometh again. But it is impossible to escape thine hands. So it is impossible to escape the hands of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, especially when it comes forth to judgment, man. Okay. And, and and that's what this matter was, man. The Lord took away this woman's life, man, because it was it was judgment, it was a a, a justice, a, a just judgment, man. Okay, regardless, you know, it, it may seem sad, it may seem like something that you know why, 
But we have the answers why. We and we give you the answers why. Okay, matter of fact, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab you another answer right now. Um, I believe that's in the book of Deuteronomy. I think that's chapter seven. Bear with me. And you know, I didn't I didn't didn't even have this written down. But you know, the spirit told me to go to it. So this is Deuteronomy chapter seven. I'm gonna start off at verse nine. Now therefore, <clears throat> it's like a Deuteronomy seven, verse nine. Know therefore that Yahweh thy power, he is power. And the faithful power which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So you have to be in line. You have to be, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? You have to be um, in submission, subjection, and uh, taking heed to what Yahweh Shem Yahweh told us to do, man. You have to show forth your effort and your works. Okay, not by no lip service, by uh, uh, producing your cause, man. You know, attempting to keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability. You know, taking heed to what the Lord told us to do. Everything, man. Everything. Okay? Period. Every single thing that you can think of that, that comes out of the scriptures that tells us how to worship the Lord, reverence Him, and be obedient to Him, you have to do those things, man. Verse 10. And repaying them that hate Him to their face. And, you know... And as we know and as we see, I believe that this young woman is of the northern uh, kingdom, where she might be, you know, Issachar, Zebulon, but she's a, a so-called Hispanic or Latino, whatever, whatever which one it is. And we know that the so-called Hispanics and Latinos uh, have a, a, a Mother Mary type spirit, okay? Jesus Christos, whatever they call them, you know, El Blanco. <laughs> so that's uh, literally denouncing and uh, 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 giving reverence to your oppressor, man. Because that's where we got that nonsense from, the oppressor, the captor, man. Okay? And repaying them that hate him to their face to destroy them, he will not slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. And that's what's happening to our people across the four corners of the earth and especially here in, the, in Babylon the Lord is repaying those that hate him to their motherfucking face man so you can boohoo you can cry you can say why Lord why she was a good person he was a good person no the fuck they wasn't they were wicked they were evil they hated Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai okay as, as it also states in the book of Proverbs chapter 8 somewhere in the 30s I want to say close to the end it said those that hate me love death Okay, and our people hate the Lord and love death. Okay, look, look, look at these cultures that our our, our 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 tribes cleave to, man. Judah on down, you got that black culture, death. You got the clo the culture for the Latinos and, and Hispanics, death. You got the culture for the uh, so-called Native American and some Indians, death. Okay. Period. Point blank. Period. I'm gonna read verse ten again, man, because you got it, it, it hits home, man. And repayeth them that hateth him to their face to destroy them, and that's what the Lord is doing, man. He's repaying those Israelites that hate him, that won't come back to him, that won't seek him, that only acknowledge with the, these false idols, these false religions, these strongholds. He's paying them directly to their face and destroying them. And, and, and the judgments that he's bringing forth ain't sweet. They ain't nice. They ain't no, you know, when you go to sleep, you're just going to give up the ghost. No, you're going to feel it through uh, through pain. You're going to feel it through harsh, grievous pain. Okay, you're going to be afflicted. You're going to cry out. You're going to beg. You're going to plead for your life. And I'm pretty sure this woman right here, which, you know, she's an attractive young lady. Okay, but uh, again, as, as I always state, your outer appearance doesn't mean shit. What about your in inward appearance? What about your spirit? What about your mental Okay, so you know you being you being attractive. You, do you really think Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh is gonna say, "Oh man, I ain't gonna put her there"? Look, look how look how beautiful she is. Look at them titties. Look at that ass. You 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 think that's gonna stop the Lord from uh, uh, bringing forth judgment on you women? And do you think the, the, that the, the how you men uh, uh, carry yourselves and how you know you know your uh, your intelligence and how you do things and all? Okay, 
So let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Let's grab another precept. Uh, let's go to the book of Sirach, and I might, I might just end it. I might, I might grab one more. I might just go ahead and just grab the rest of them, because you know the spirit just had me grab those other ones that that I didn't have right, written down. So like you, Second Edges chapter nine, verse. 22 let the multitude perish then which was born in vain so that multitude that's perishing and, and that was born in vain is you two-thirds man and look at that word vain that word vain goes into uh, to produce uh, uh producing uh, uh producing a useless a uselessness uh vain so like yeah i don't i hate butchering stuff man i'm gonna i'm just looking up myself for y'all real quick but i know i know as it goes into useless vain worthless so let's let me grab it real quick. Uh, having or showing, vain. Having or showing, an exceedingly high. Uh, that's not the definition I want. Slot like here. Producing no result, useless. Producing no result, useless. Producing no result, useless. That's vain. So again, uh, Second Edges chapter nine verse twenty-two. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain, and let the great be kept. And my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. And those are the ones that were um, predestinated and chosen before the creation and foundation of the earth, man. The elect, man. Okay, which we hope and pray to be. And that's what you see happening right now. The multitude perishing that was born in vain. And that's what's going to that's, that's what's gonna be amplified, man. Okay? So let's jump to Second Edris, chapter 15. And we'll grab one more precept and we'll close out. Because the point's made. Uh, so this is Second Edges chapter fifteen. Um, Salakia, and I'm gonna start off at verse twenty-four. Woe to them that sin, and keep not my commandments, saith Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And again, to celebrate your birthday, your born day, is not of our customs. That's a transgression. That's a sin. So that's just one thing that that we know in this truth and that we see. And again, there's no telling. How these people uh, 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 conducted, what type of lifestyle they had, what they were doing in their lives, you know, for this judgment to be brought forth, man. Because not only did the um, did the his wife get judged and you know get called back to the spiritual realm, but the Most High used the husband to to put the wife to death and also to put this man in jail. Okay, so they both got judged. Okay. Verse twenty-five. I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children, from the power. Defile not my sanctuary. And that sanctuary is the whole body of Israel. And furthermore, the sanctuary of the, uh, uh, the of the elect, man. Okay, because you uh, you two thirds are, are, are literally a, a, a sacrifice for the elect, man. Okay, and, and the Lord's not going to spare none of you wicked ass Israelites, man. None of you guys are going to be spared. None of you women. None of you men. None of you children. Okay. If you're on if you're on Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah's hit list, you will not be spared, man. Verse 26. For the Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, knoweth all them that sin against him, and therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction. So everything that we see happening on the earth was judgment from Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. He's delivering our people to death and destruction, man. And again, it's not going to be nice. It's not going to be sweet. It's not going to be one of those deaths where you go to sleep and you just give up the ghost. No, it's going to be painful. You're going to have a lot of affliction. It's going to be grievous. You're, you're more than likely going to beg for your life. You're more than likely going to beg for help. It's not going to be sweet. Okay, because the Lord, is, 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 is uh, uh, he's created all types of things for vengeance, man. To appease his wrath. To appease uh, uh, his pleasure, man. Okay? Let's grab this last precept and we'll close out. And this is a warning, man. You know, we and we tell Israel this all the time, man. But you know, what does Jake do? He 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 disregards the warning, man. This is Sirach chapter five, verse seven, because everybody knows about the Hebrew Israelites. Everybody knows, and I'm pretty sure they came across a camp, whether they walked past them, rolled past them in the car, or came past 
uh, some type of uh, camp on a, a social media platform everybody knows and the first thing we do when we come across you people that come up to the camp look at the sign we warn you Sirach 5 verse 7 make no tarry to turn to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai and put not off from day to day for suddenly okay this is what happened to her she was celebrating her birthday having a good time living it up probably drinking if she drink you know probably smoking if she smoked living it up you know but she didn't think that that would be the last time she would she would have a birthday. She would be celebrating the birthday. And that would be the last time she talked to her family or see her children. For suddenly shall the wrath of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, come forth. And in thy security, because you in your own home, you with your husband, your loved one. You don't think he's going to bring you any harm. You don't think that the Lord is going to put a spirit on him to put you to death. You don't think that the Lord is going to make this man beat the hell out of you and then get in the car and run your ass over to make sure that that that, that the uh, the judgment is done, to make sure that you ain't breathing. Okay? For suddenly shall the wrath of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh shall come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. And, and, and that was the day of vengeance for this young lady, man. So I'm going to leave it right there, man. I don't want to za. I hope and I pray that this was edifying, uplifting, and informative to the true, sincere Akim Wa'akwaf. So with that, I'm just going to say, Koho layam la, abanawa yahawa bahashim, yahawa shai, bahashim, rakat kwadash. Watha wada, yahawa bahashim, yahawa shai, bahashim, rakat kwadash. For putting the spirit on me, my elder apostles, elder bishops, elders, brothers on down, for doing these epistles to enlighten you, to inform you, to edify you, and uplift you through the power and spirit and words of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. May the blessing and election and protection be upon you and your household. Adawan Rataza into the next one. So with that, I'm just gonna say Shalom. <laughs>